I broke Borders Gate free and changed the game genre by becoming a stealth archer on the hardest difficulty. The rules for this run are quite simple. Only my main character can do damage, I cannot lose a single hit point, and I'll start Act 3 with no weapons or armor. So join me on my adventure to see how you can become the most overpowered, broken stealth archer in BG3. We start in Act 3 as Mummy Milkers, the darling of my channel, and I'll change her into a ranger. We're picking Urban Tracker as a passive feature for the slot of hand proficiency as our fingers will get quite sticky this episode. At level 2, we pick Archery for plus 2 to weapon attacks. At level 3, our subclass is Gloom Stalker. And at level 4, we get the Sharpshooter Fate for an additional 10 damage. At level 5, we get the first secret ingredient in our build. Pass without trace. It adds a flat 10 bonus onto stealth checks and let me tell you, everyone is sleeping on this. You'll see why soon enough. Level 6 is a dip into rogue and make sure you have sleight of hand and stealth proficiency. At level 8 we pick assassin. Joining us on our adventure is God's favorite princess, Shadow Cute. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? We just need one spell from her and that is Greater Invisibility, the final ingredient in our recipe. I made her a sorceress solely for the reason that I can extend that spell. Are you still with me? I know in the intro I said I start with no weapons or armor. I mean that's technically true. But I kept my rings because you know, your girl needs her bling. Of the Caustic Band which adds 2 acid damage and the Strange Conduit Ring which adds psychic damage if we're concentrating on a spell and let me tell you we most definitely will be with the setup out of the way let's gear up and play the bloody game our first objective is to get some clothes for our girls so i don't get demonetized i get interrupted by a homeless child and i tell the kid to get lost um Next, we stop by the Rivington General and we pickpocket the lizard whose name I can't pronounce. We're after the elven chain because it gives us advantage on decked saving throws and it looks cool. From this point onwards, we are stealing every serrated looking slang arrow and it should be a guaranteed roll given our proficiency. I bypass the city checkpoint by going to the side and a quick stop by Sharessa's caress for some drip for Shadow Cute. Looking good there, miss. Approaching the bridge checkpoint, I bypass it by flying onto this balcony, onto the roof, and finally across the gap. We ignore Gortash's request and head straight into the city. After entering the city, we find Fitz and stick our hands into our pockets to grab some arrows and the dead shot bow. The Deadshot bow reduces a roll required to crit by one and doubles our proficiency bonus when rolling ranged attacks. Steal some gold if you can, we'll need about 6,000 for this run. Don't stress about failing your rolls, they'll just get a little upsetty spaghetti, but that's about it. Our next stop is to the guild hall to find Sticky Dondo. Actually, it's our fingers that are sticky. We're after the Shade Slayer cloak. Another minus one required to crit into Kane's office and read the Devil Fee's observer report to trigger a quest. Speaking of Devil's Fee, head inside and steal a ritual pouch and tome from Halsey. Up the stairs we go, stealing a nice tonic on the way. There's the thirsty ward here and I know the pain of being thirsty. Give it the tonic we just picked up and the trap deactivates. Trust me, you need to deactivate it. Haha. <laughs> Go into the side room and lockpick this small chest on the bedside table. We get the mask of soul perception which adds plus two to our attack rolls and perception checks. The first target on our hit list is Kazador. Pass the guards using deception and enter the palace. You know how I said I won't be losing HP this run? Well there's a necrotic corpse in the way. You take damage if you open this door so I shoot it down. I then walk into this corner and misty step into the room to grab the dictionary. 
Next, we need the family ring, so I stick my fingers in the Bone Boy's pockets and then unlock the door. Shutterheart, twin cuffs, greater invisibility, and we walk past the furries and down the elevator. Starting things off with a sneak attack, I immediately follow up with three more arrows. I then enter turn-based combat so Cazador doesn't move. I select an undead arrow and then I seal the deal with a normal arrow. Alright, so you probably want an explanation for Stealth Archer, right? Basically, while in Greater Invis, any action you take, you have to roll a Stealth check to stay invisible. Combined with the flat plus 10 from Pass Without Trace, Along with our proficiencies and the gear we have, that's about plus 23 onto our rolls. As long as you succeed your rolls, you should be able to attack with impunity and never enter combat. <laughs> ah yes, Rhapsody, one of my favourite weapons in BG3. The dagger's ability Scarlet Remittance gives us a plus one to attack rolls, damage and spell DC for every foe you slay up to plus three. And let me tell you, this is huge. If you didn't know, you can literally destroy random objects like this water jug and these potion bottles. As you can see, we just built three stacks. We long rest, pickpocket some arrows, money, and then decide to hit up another target. Laroakan doesn't really serve a purpose, so I just did it for fun. Let's give him the stealth archer treatment, shall we? That was a pretty clean kill. Clara gets met. Starting the Unholy Assassin quest line, then I go to the Face Makers. I rolled the stealth check and then realized I had an issue. Dola goes invisible. Sadly, it did take me some time before I realized smoke powder arrows were a thing. Stealth Archer is ours. Lend the passphrase and grab the handbag. Get it? Handbag? Tee Oh, I almost forgot the robe. See, it was important. Have your bag handy. A grasping hand. Okay, I'll stop handing out the puns. I am so sorry, dearest Fia. I managed to find myself in combat. How do you feel about being an unholy assassin, mummy milkers? Yay! Alright, the reason we did this was for the crater flesh gloves. The crater flesh gloves are amazing for stealth builds. Whenever you deal a critical hit, deal an additional 1 to 6 force damage. So buy these gloves of him. And yes, I did say buy because you can't pickpocket this particular traitor. Let's go assassinate Orange, shall we? To skip the ambush, we just go invisible, fly to the waypoint, and join up with Shatterheart. And she's the best girl. Do you want to see something disgusting? Did you just see that damage? I've been sleeping on the special arrows, honestly. Yeah, Stealth Archer is pretty gross and broken. Anyways, we entered combat, so I just went far enough with flying and dash until I was out of combat again. Hey, can you blame me? The AI takes 10 years to do their turn. We head back in with stealth. And it was at this point when I was looting Orin's Neverstone that I realized the armor I was looking for wasn't on her. So our next stop will be the Counting House. Our greater Invis duo casually strolled past the main game and flew past all these pressure plates. I leave Shadowheart behind and I made myself invisible before the cutscene. There's like a fight going on and we're just vibing. Anyways, we did the Stealth Archer meme to the enemies. I actually had so much trouble with this lock that I have to get Shadowheart in here. The elegant studded leather armor gives you advantage on stealth checks. Can you imagine? We're literally untouchable now. You can only get spotted if you either run out of invis duration or roll in that one. Given that we're rolling with advantage, that's quite unlikely. I think we need a bow upgrade. As the lock clicks open. The alarm triggers. That's alright, we're next to the door. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I found out that the Steel Watcher Titan doesn't come up when you're invisible. That's fine, let's just have some target practice. That's one down. 
Okay, we rolled a critical fail on the stealth check, but we're still invisible. The Steel Watch of Titan comes on, and we're actually in turn-based combat. I cast Perilous Stakes, which makes the Titan vulnerable. Our Dread Ambusher did 157 damage, and our Arrow of Construct Slaying did 143 damage. I fire two more arrows, and that's the Titan down. After the fight is over, we obtain a new bow, Gonta Mail. This is considered the best in slot bow for Bold Escape Frey, but honestly, I feel like the Titan String Bow is better with her Strength Elixir. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Heading back to Worms Crossing, I go by a statue to get permanent bless. Can you hurry up, Shudderheart? We have assassination to attend. Since we beat the Steelwatcher Titan and got a new bow, or the Steelwatcher uh, Hostile. So I sent Mummy Melkers on a solo mission. We walk through the middle of the ceremony and find a nice vantage point. I was feeling a little devious, so I coated my arrows in drow poison. After one single snake attack, Gortash fell asleep to the poison. Which is nice and all, but he fell below the floor and I can't click him. Ah yes. I just love Stealth Archer. It is such a perfectly balanced build, and we're definitely not abusing game mechanics in Bold Escape 3. After making short work of Gortash, I fly down and get the final Neverstone. And it's at this point we have a decision to make. We can go about finishing the game, or we can flex on Raphael. I wonder what Miss Evelyn will. Back to Devil's Fane. You know, I don't really follow instructions, so I just throw these objects randomly until I brute force the portal open. After we traverse the portal, we arrive at the house of home. Speaking of hope, I wasn't prepared for how much yapping she does. She's literally draining me. I don't want to deal, so I lockpick the door. Next, we pretend we're a stealth archer in Skyrim and shoot baddies in real time. That is, until we reach the boudoir. I decided to use the arrow many targets and then failed my stealth roll. I guess that's fine. All I lost was my time waiting for my turn, but not my HP. Speaking of HP, I didn't want to lose the challenge pressing the switch, so I tried shooting it and that didn't work. And then I realized Sharp was a sorcerer, so I used a mage hand to press it for me. We get the password, have a bath with our girlfriend, and then steal the Orphic Hammer. Next, the spectators were shot down without any clue of our existence. I guess some lady luck with these stealth rolls. I almost forgot an M. Remember, no witnesses. I free hope and get some snacks. Sorry for being so hopeless at the game, everyone. in the course, cut and claws, and hold your applause. Swirl, for now, down here, come the claws. hearing that song. Unfortunately, I didn't get to hear it as I was out of combat. Just two more stops before the finale, my dears. First is Sorceress Sundries, where we steal two greater invis girls. Trust me, we need at least one. And the second stop is to Fologia's fireworks. Pickpocket the man and steal everything in the display cases. 
That includes the basement. All right, now for the absolute worst part in the playthrough. The hardest thing we've ever done on this channel. I'm so sorry, Shadowhunt. A shame. I thought we were doing well together. Perhaps I'll see you at camp. Farewell. We say goodbye to the most Just precious the deer and give her a kiss. We fell socks on, of course. After a tearful farewell, we do something I thought I'd never do. Admit to being gay. And before we leave the portal, we're going to shoot the Emperor in the ass. He's gonna get salty and leave us alone. So why do we want to be alone? Well, I don't want to rely on him to dominate the Elder Brain. Go invisible and skip all the fighting. Once we get through these doors, look closely. We're going to walk as far as we can on this platform. Rotate the camera and misty step to skip right to the brainstalk. It might take you a few tries, but I find hovering near the brainstalk itself is good for me. Remember the greater invis scroll we stole? We're going to use it before we climb up. Once we're up, we're just gonna walk past everything. And I'm pretty sure you'll pass the stealth roll to dominate the brain. The skill says it only takes a turn, but it only progressed when my invis ran out. It's time for the elder brain. After flying down and placing our legally sourced fireworks, she moves to a safe distance and enjoys an explosive finale. Thank you so much for watching and making it here. As a treat, I'll do a little cheat sheet for the build. You're probably wondering why I didn't specify what to level pass 8 in the video. Well, I didn't really know when recording the video, as the build was pretty much online at level 8, so I asked my beautiful community. And here's a comment that stood out to me. Either free in Spore Druid for extra necrotic damage, or free in Champion Fighter for another minus one for crit required. Personally, I would go Gloomstalker 5, Assassin 4, and Champion 3. My feats being Sharpshooter and plus 2 ASI to Dex. But Miss Evelyn, explain how your Stealth Archer build works. The two core ingredients are Greater Invis and Pass Without Trace. Each time we take an action in Greater Invis, we have to roll to remain stealthed. Now pass without trace as a plus 10 to our stealth rolls, and with the way we leveled our character and geared, we should have a plus 23 to our stealth checks. Did I mention that was with advantage thanks to our armor? Let's go for a quick gear check head to toe. Helmet is the mask of soul perception for the plus 2 to attack rolls. Cloak, Shades layer for another minus one to crit. As for armor, early on we used the elven chain, which helped our deck saving throws. So we swap to the elegant studded for the advantage on stealth rolls. Gloves is the crater flesh, which is a huge damage rider for stealth users, adding 1 to 6 damage every crit. Dagger is Rhapsody for the Scarlet Remittance buff, adding plus 3 to our attack rolls. You can't be a stealth archer without a bow. We started with the Deadshot, which we stole early, and moved on to the Gonta Mail, which is considered the best in slot. Beats. Ha, huh, you must be new to my channel. I'm barefoot all the time, baby. If we combine the Dead Shop Bow, Champion Fighter, and all the minus one to crit gear, we only need to roll a 16 to crit. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed your time with me. I read all the comments and I'll reply to you if you send a cool one. Subscribe, only if you want to. Okay, bye.